this message today just uh, is, is going to bring a finality to why we've been discussing what we're discussing, um, looking into the matters of the heart in regards to why the heart is an, is an issue and what well, can be an issue, should I say. Uh, and then we're going to look at that's, that's another example for someone, else, for someone that we can relate to that can really help us on this journey because you know our heart being right before the Lord is not a moment thing, it's a, it's a journey thing, it's continual. You know, that whole God word should, 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 really, should, 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 should place an emphasis on that this heart towards God is, is continually being upward and Godward towards it's about the dire direction of our hearts so much more than our hearts always being perfect and right. So I want to go to a popular scripture in Proverbs chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 20 to 27. I'm going to echo some things I echoed in a couple of weeks ago, but I want you to see the consistency of scripture. It says here in verse 20, my son, this is, this is, wisdom, this is um, Solomon talking. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your air to my sayings. Verse 21. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life, my goodness, to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. Verse 23, key verse here. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Verse 24, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. And let not, uh, oh, and let your eyes, sorry, look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Verse 26, ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Verse 27, do not turn to the right or the left. Remove not your foot from evil. This is a very powerful psalm, um, you know, Proverbs from King Solomon, the richest and wisest man who ever lived, the son of David and Bathsheba. Uh, and he's given instructions to his son. Before this part, it's a famous scripture of, you know, um, wisdom is the principal thing. In all that I get in, get understanding. And I spoke to you guys a few weeks ago about, you know, the wisdom being Christ. He's the principal thing. The principal thing is to get saved. But after you get saved, get understanding. And Jesus gives us a highlight that understanding is a function of the heart. He says that the eyes of your heart or understanding be enlightened. So this proverb here is, 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 that, is that scripture manifested and made tangible. It's now made practical. What does it mean for wisdom to be a principal thing? Is give me your attention. How do I gain understanding? Incline your ears to my sayings. Now, it's very, very key here that we look at each verse. Verse 20 deals with the ears. Incline your ear to my sayings. Verse 21 deals with the eyes. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Verse 22 deals with the mouth because it says they are life to those who find them, health to all the flesh. How do, we, how do we make our flesh healthy, our bodies healthy? By the stuff that we eat. And then he results in this instruction. Keep your heart with all diligence. Remember, I spoke about the three gates that have access to your heart. The eye gate, the air gate, and the mouth gate. Go and re listen to week number two. We know that these three areas if not consecrated, if not devoted unto the things that God requires and devoted to, these become entryways for our hearts to be defiled. Uh, so I find it interesting, once again, like it was in Genesis chapter 3 with Eve, so it is now in Proverbs chapter 4. Check the consistency of the word. He tells you, let your ears be attentive. Let your eyes be fixed. Let what enters your mouth be healthy. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to teach you a principle, son, in how to limit the issues of your life. And he says, keep your heart 
with all to, we hear this all the time, especially women, you know, when they're in relationships. Guard your heart, guard your heart. That's what I should say. Yeah. <laughs> guard your heart. You know, God, guard my heart. Don't let, let, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, the heart. What was it, what's You know, do, do, do not awaken love before it's time. Very key scriptures that are not just for women and are for men. Don't go and touch somebody's heart before you know you can handle it. Hallelujah. I praise his name. Uh -oh. <laughs> God, your heart. He, this scripture is powerful because he, he's telling me something. Okay, like, he says here, for out of it flows the issues of life. Meaning, I, and, and this is something that, that even the world says, like, life is 10% what happens to you. But it's 90% how you respond. He's telling me here, Brother Ayoda, the issues that you will have in your life will always be a reflection of what's going on in your heart. I need you to guard it. This is a revelation for you, beloved. A revelation for you, beloved. Because even your heart, as we know, has eyes. And even your heart has a function called understanding. How you perceive changes everything. This is why when you get saved, Jesus said you must be born again. For a man, if he's not born again, cannot see the kingdom. The first thing God deals with is light, vision, sight, perception. So when God is saying guard or keep with all diligence, you see this word diligence in the Hebrew is very interesting because it, it, it speaks firstly to a place of confinement, a prison, jail. That's what the word there, diligence in its root actually means. And it has connotations to guarding and protecting or observing. So when he says keep, which we could, you know, say is God, you know, you know, protect with all diligence. He is emphasizing the intentionality of your responsibility to, to know what is coming in and going out of your heart. Let's look at jail. Jail was created for one purpose, to house criminals. What is the purpose of your heart? You see, you've got to look at your heart as a delicate place of confinement that whatever goes in there is going to be either for good or for bad. How intentional are you over the prison of your heart? You see, it, now it's different now because now we're realizing that there are things we can lock in our hearts. Bitterness and rage. And now we see that there, there are now rooms in our hearts that we are not diligent to guard and to watch over what we allow to enter in can become detrimental. A lack of diligence is what happened to David. Let me tell you how David ended up sleeping with Bathsheba. It didn't just happen. Oh, no, 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 no. David didn't just happen to sleep with Bathsheba. Let's go to the scripture. I want to show you a picture here about why it's important to be diligent. The most diligent thing that you can do in your life is to watch what goes in and out of your heart. It says here in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 to 2. And I'm going to do a phenomenal thing. I'm going to preach this before 1 o'clock. Hey, hallelujah. Let's read this Bible slowly. In the spring of the year, the Bible is setting out a time. The time when kings go to battle, he's setting up a place. <laughs> David sent Joab and his servants with him and all of Israel. And they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Raboth. But David remained in Jerusalem. Verse 2. It happened <laughs> late one afternoon. When David arose from his couch, look at him, just, just, just passive and casual, just lounging, just chilling, playing some PS5. Let me go outside for a minute. I, I was walking on the roof. He had a penthouse, y'all, uh, of the king's house. And then he saw from the roof, my goodness, look at the timing of this thing. 
late afternoon, late afternoon, then he saw from the roof a woman bathing. Wow. And that woman was very beautiful. See, when the Bible says a woman is very beautiful, I need you guys to understand, she was the pangs of the pangs, yeah? She, she was a sight to behold that every man on this earth would have turned their heads. Jesus. Yeah? Now, before we talk about why that tsunami even existed, that she was bathing at whatever time and he, she was there and he saw her, let's ask the question of why was David there? You see, David has this description of his life as a man after the heart of God. That's what, we, that's, what, that's what we know about David from the day that he first came to the scene. So, so for me personally, following from Susan's message last week, Saul represented somebody under the old covenant. David represents somebody under the, under, under the new covenant. David represents us. People who had generally have hearts for God, who've been changed, who, who, who are seeking God, you know, who are just living this life. And before this chapter, David was is probably at the height of his career as a king. He's been killing off all these people. He's been, he's, he's been in jail. So David got to a place where he got a bit comfortable. David got to a point where time and chance and opportunity to either do the right thing or to sin was, a, was apparent for him. The Bible says the race is not for the swift or for the wise or for the gift or the talent. It's time and chance happens to all men. What was David's time? David's time was time for him to go to the battle. What was David's chance? His chance was to go and win a battle. But instead, David spent his time at home. David now had a chance to look at his roof. And an opportunity to sin arrived. God's been talking to us about time, beloved. He's been talking to us about time. He's been talking to us about time. Because some of you need to understand how you use your time is a revelation of the condition of your heart. You see, sinning and righteousness has everything to do with your timing and environment. This is why the Psalms 1 man had to leave some things in verse 1 and dedicate himself to some things in verse 2. That in verse 3, he could be a man that is prosperous in all of his ways. This is why Abraham had to leave Lot and then receive a vision in regards to his future. This is why a man leaves his mother and father and cleaves to his wife. This is why the disciples left their families at once and followed Jesus. See, there was a time of you being called and a time for you to leave some things. Time and environment. Hmm. God is calling us to steward. Our time. Some of you are so passive that you find yourselves with plenty more opportunity than you ought to to sit. So some of you are, are, are so lounging you know, you know what the Bible calls you? Sluggards, lazy, passive. You know, the, the, you, you, you have desires, but you lack the will to do the work. And therefore, the time that you should be using to redeem has now become opportunities to sin. Because remember, redeem the time for the days are evil. Every day, beloved, the, the enemy wants you to do something evil. Every day he presented to you evil. Every day there is a chance to do what is wrong in the sight of the Lord. And if you fell in verse 15 of Ephesians 5, where he says, walk circumspectly as the wise and not as the fool, you, if, you, if you're foolish with how you walk, you'll become foolish with your time. And if you're foolish with your time, you will probably spend most of your time fighting off opportunities to sin rather than potential opportunities to do what is right. I hope you guys are following me here, what I'm saying. It's good. Thank you. I hope you guys are following me here with what I am saying. Every man should take heed if he thinks he stands, lest he falls. David, at this moment in his time, didn't take heed to himself. Didn't take heed. He thought, I've been winning battles. Let me take this one chance up. Let me just take this up. Let me just take this chance to chill. He got complacent. 
Got complacent. That's what I did. Tosa said he got complacent. What's the... If you were to ask me, what was Jesus like, one of his main messages to us about when he was coming, stay watch. Stay dressed. You do not know the hour I'm coming. Be ready. So all over the Gospels. All the time. Like all the parables, even the digital talents, it was all to do with what do you have now? I'm coming back. I want to see an investment. Beloved, this thing of time is very serious, very sensitive. Moses said a prayer, teach me to number my day that I may gain a what? A heart of wisdom. Hmm. Holy Spirit, speak to us today. So I want to show you how David dealt with this situation. Hallelujah. But I hope you guys have really heard me today loud and clear. <laughs> I hope you guys have heard me today. <laughs> hey, we're going to go to Psalms 51. <laughs> and we're going to go to verse number six. Uh, and we're going to read this first in the New King James Version. I think it's ESV actually. And then we're going to go into the Passion Translation. So guess what happens, guys, with David? You can go to the, put it back on the screen quickly before I go to the scripture. D David... Um, uh, um, David had uh, what's he done? So David had um, slept with this woman. Um, this woman came to him, slept with her, um, with him, um, her. Sorry, him. <laughs> um, she got pregnant, uh, so he tried to. He thought he was smart. He said, <laughs> okay, call her husband to come back from war and sleep with his wife. His husband was so integral, and he can't sleep with his wife while his while his brothers are out there beefing. So his husband stayed at the door of his house. So he said, okay, I've got to find another way. Let me put him on the front line so that he can die in battle. Uh, and, then, uh, and then obviously all that stuff happened. Nathan comes to David about a year later. Yeah. So God, 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 God doesn't even come to him at the moment. He said, God says, okay, I'll see you, bro. I'm coming to, and David and you know you know what's powerful about Nathan Nathan is David's right hand prophet right even how he addresses the king is so powerful because of a parable so even it's, beloved even when you're being corrected know your place they, Nathan a man sent from God gave him a word first in a parable and like Susan like, like said talking about sheep and lambs and David being a, a man of wisdom that he is said oh that's, that man is very whatever and David said well that, that you are that man so David, God knows how to deal with his sons. Mm -hmm. yeah. had, to, had to come to him with a parable. Mm -hmm. God, see, God is, is speaking to you even now about your sin. He's got, and you know. And this is where you need. This, this is the difference between David and Saul now. Saul was concerned about what people would think. Mm -hmm. David was concerned about how his heart had, was far from God. Mm -hmm. And David comes with this, 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 this iconic scripture that all believers know. Across the whole entire book, all of us have been sinning out here when we got saved. We all know what it means to, to fall into sin after you get. You know that first time you sin after you get saved, you know. So, oh, uh, Psalm fifty one, you know, create. <laughs> this is this is how a scripture that we that we that we speak of, that was of great evil from David. David now says this. He says, in verse six, I'm not gonna read the whole thing because of time. Verse six, someone, behold, you delight truth in the inward being. And you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Let me read it in the Passion Translation. I know that you delight to set your truth deep in my spirit. So come into, look, 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 into the hidden places of my heart and teach me wisdom. Guys, do you know that your heart has hidden places? What was the source of David's sin? Was it because Bathsheba was naked and beautiful? No. It was because there was a hidden place okay. in the heart of David yeah. that had not yet been yielded and surrendered to God. There was a place where truth had not yet reigned in that place in his heart. The Bible says, it says here, you delight in truth in the inward being. And what was David's request? Teach me wisdom. 
You see, because God's not denying the fact that, that she's attractive and that your engine might turn on. He just, he just wants to give you wisdom what to do when that happens. Uh, temptation happens to all men. I heard my Bible say that temptation is not very negative. It's a, the t- temptation is a revealer of your strengths. Hmm. When you are tempted, it's showing restraint. It, it's God's way of proving you. <laughs> so don't despise temptation. Use temptation to strengthen your reins. Teach me wisdom. And we know from his son, Solomon, that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And therefore, if Moses is saying, Lord, teach me to number my days, that I may gain a heart of wisdom. Maybe, beloved... Maybe, beloved, that, 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 that when God is admonishing us to manage our time, he is asking you to practically identify what is driving your life. Because yeah. wherever your treasure is, beloved, your heart is also. And treasures are laboured for. And if you are going to use your life to labour for treasures on things on earth, which will pass away, or labor for treasures on in the heavens, which will, will last forever. What's he saying here? Your labor is evident in the time spent on the things that matter to you. Come on. Hmm. Do not labor, Ayo, for things on the earth. They will pass away. The moth will come and labor for things. What? Drives your life. Okay. Wherever your treasure is, I am. There is your heart also. What do you? What do you treasure? What do you value? What's that thing that you want? Is it him? Okay. This is why he says in the same chapter, you can't serve mammon and God. You will hate one or love the other. Okay. That's why he says. Why do you worry about all these things that the Gentiles do? Seek first to kingdom. Yeah. And all these other things will be added. Yeah, added yeah. That whole chapter of Matthew 6 is about whom will you seek? What do you live for? Well, whom do you love? Hmm. And he gave us three keys on how to maintain that in the first three, first six verses. When you pray, when you fast, when you give. Three pillars that every Christian must maintain in. So that they can check themselves. Fasting checks your appetite. Okay. G- giving checks what do you live for, mammon or, or, or God? Okay. Prayer, who is your source? It's good. So when you start to see your, an area of lack of giving in your life, check your heart. When you see an area of lack of prayer in your life, check your heart. When you see an area of, of, of a lack of fasting in your life, check your heart. Check your heart. Check it. Do not become complacent, my beloved, in your praying, in your giving, and in your fasting. That's the practical way of how we consecrate our gates, your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. This is how we maintain a pure heart before the Lord. Because what I love here is that we see in verse 10, the cry of the whole chapter is, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Okay. I love it. Create. We're, we're a house of creation. Create in me. This, what's, the, what's the biggest and the most beautiful creation God can do in your life? He give you a new heart. In the, in the pastoral religion, it says, keep on creating a clean heart within me. Okay. Wow. David knew that this is not a one-time thing. I need this renewal daily. I need to renew it consistently. He, he says, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 once again, David knows that this thing is spiritual. 
It's spiritual. Yeah, I know my lack of sensitivity of being led by the Spirit led me to walk in carnality in this moment. I, I knew my lack of sensitivity of doing what was right, walk in the Spirit. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your faith. David knew that his spirit was lacking steadfastness. I need a renewal. Make my spirit steadfast. And the people thing about this, this prayer is that it's not something that you can conjure by yourself. Jesus. I'm not calling you to what's beloved. I'm calling you into greater dependence on God. I'm calling you to humility. I'm calling you to abase yourself. I'm calling you to say I'm calling you to understand that truly without God and apart from God, you are and can do nothing. The author of the new in your life is God creating in you a clean heart. The author of the new in your life is God creating in you a clean heart. So let him do it. When he comes like Nathan, when he brings a prophet or a preacher to you and speaks to you in your language, today if you hear his correction, if you hear his heart, voice, sorry, harden not your heart. You see, you see if that scripture tells us plainly you have a choice with what you hear. Harden your heart in stubbornness or be open and respond with a willingness. I'm going to end with this scripture and we're going to pray. Verse chapter 16. I just want to really encourage the house of a new friend London this morning. I want to encourage you guys. Can my dark and shattered and broken heart please God? Yes. Verse 16. For the source of your pleasure is not in my performance or the sacrifices I might offer to you. Verse 17. The fountain of your pleasure is found in the sacrifice of my shattered heart before you. You will not despise my tenderness, as I bow down humbly at your feet. You will not despise my tenderness. Tenderness. Ten I told my wife last year, end of the year, I said, babe, last year for me, the enemy was after the tenderness of my heart. He was he 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 would he, he was bringing situations to me that were that were challenging the tenderness of my heart. I could feel my heart becoming hard in areas where it was soft because of offenses and wrongs done against me. And I knew that I, if I don't check this thing, the gift might still work. But there's a tenderness, there's a union, there's a there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a delicacy that I have with God. I'm gonna lose. There's a texture. And I had to remind myself, what pleases God is not keep on going. What pleases God is that my heart remains tender. That I can respond to his voice. That I can respond to his word. I can respond. That I can respond. That I can respond. A hardened heart, a stony heart can't respond. But a heart that is tender. And God will not despise your tenderness. God will not despise your frailty. God will not despise your weakness. God does not despise. These things are what pleases him. So I want you to bring your heart, however dark, whatever is hidden there, whatever is in there, the thing that pleases him is that heart being brought before him. So even now a new thing, London, I want you even now, wherever you are, to bring your heart to the Father. It, here is my heart. You can have it all. I want you to come and bring your heart to the Father with understanding that this pleases him, that he finds pleasure in you offering your shattered heart. He will not despise as you bow down humbly before him at his feet, saying, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I have sinned. I'm jacked up. I'm weary, I'm hurt, I'm lost, I'm broken. Lord, my desire for you is zero. 
<laughs> but Lord, I'm calling upon you because that's what faith is, guys. It's not being stronger. It's realizing who is strong and you call upon him that is stronger. Uh, Lord, I come humbly with acknowledgement today that you are able to keep me from falling. You are able to present me faultless before your throne. You are able. Lord, I lean on your ability today to create in me the clean heart that will honour you, that will love you, that will serve you. Lord, teach me to number my days. Come on. Teach me to steward my time. Teach me to redeem the time. Teach me to make the most of opportunity. Teach me to number my day that I may gain a heart of wisdom, that I may gain a heart that fears you, that I may flee from evil. Make me like Joseph, Lord, that how can I sin against God and my master? Bring a tenderness even back to how we treat one another. May we not take light how we can sin against one another. Let our reverence for God teach us to honour one another. I feel that strong for some of you guys here. How you treat people. How you treat people. How you treat people. Come on. It's a revelation of the honour you have for God. If you love God who you can't see, you can't hate people who you do see. Hallelujah. Teach this house, Lord. Teach this house. Teach us, we pray. Holy Spirit, teach us. Teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you are blessed, hashtag in the comments, teach us. Teach us, teach us, teach us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, I really want to encourage you guys. Listen to the message again. Listen to last week, the week before. This heart check is just the preface for the rest of the year. We want to see the new experience the new, manage the new, steward the new. It starts with a clean and a new heart. That is the foundation of who we are. That's what will cause us to not turn God's blessings to curses, guys. That will cause us to enjoy the fruit of our labours. This is what will please the Lord in all of our ways if our hearts are right before him. And the heart that is right before God is a heart that is tender and responsive. Not a lot of son or daughter that is perfect, but a heart that is tender.